this tutorial, we will study the indirect statement construction in Latin. Before we can understand indirect statement, let's review what it means for something to be a direct statement. In the sentence, Marcus says, quote, Caesar is running to the city. In Latin would be, Marcus dicit, quote, Caesar ad urbem curit. What we have in a direct statement is simply a verb of speaking and then the actual words that the person spoke. Here's another example. Catullus clamavit, Te amo mea lesbia. Catullus shouted, quote, I love you, my lesbia. And again, the quote are the actual words that he spoke. Here's another example using the verb inquit. For some reason, Latin always likes to put inquit after the quote starts. Quote, amicus meus, end quote. Inquit, quote, cras adveniet. My friend, he said, will arrive tomorrow. Here's how an indirect statement works in English. Marcus says, that Caesar is running to the city. We have the same introduction, a verb of speaking, and then we have the word that. What follows that is the fact of what Marcus says, not necessarily the direct quote. Notice that with verb to say, you actually don't even have to use the word that. A perfectly sensible indirect statement in English could be, Marcus says Caesar is running to the city. Now, here's an example that shows you what happens in an indirect statement is not the direct quote. Catullus shouted. That is a verb of speaking. He shouted that, and the substance of what he shouted is that, he loves his lesbia. Now, what he actually shouted was, I love you, my lesbia. But the indirect statement here only gives us the substance. On to Latin. How does Latin conduct an indirect statement? Here's our English example. Marcus says that Caesar is running to the city. We're going to start exactly the same way a verb of speaking. And then, here is how an indirect statement works. Marcus says, Caesarem ad urbem curere. What this is, a verb of speaking, dicit, followed by an accusative. So the subject within the indirect statement, the thing that Marcus is saying happened, is in the accusative. Normally, of course, accusative would be our direct object. In an indirect statement, it could be the subject. And the verb in the indirect statement is the infinitive, curere. To run is the ordinary translation of curere. But in the indirect statement, we're translating it here as a present tense verb. And the final element, ad orbem, it could have been an object of another verb. Those are basically thrown in. But here's the nuts and bolts of an indirect statement in Latin. Introduced by a verb of speaking, then a subject in the accusative, and a verb as an infinitive, and most importantly, no word for that in the Latin. There is nothing in the Latin that corresponds to the word that. Here's another example. Catullus shouted that he loves his lesbia. We'll translate it. The beginning, Catullus clamavit. Now remember, if we're turning this into an indirect statement in Latin, there's not going to be a word for that. We're going to move straight to he. Now since Catullus is the one who he's saying loves his lesbia, we're going to use the reflexive pronoun, say. If we're translating indirect statement, this verb is going to be an infinitive. And so, Catullus clamavit say, 
suam lespiam amare. Note, however, that there is some flexibility in word order. We could have moved the infinitive immediately after the subject within the indirect statement and the object last. Indirect statement can be introduced by any verb of speaking, knowing, thinking, or perceiving feeling. Here are a few examples. Claudia sperat patrem ad foro venire. Claudia hopes that her father is coming to the forum. So, introduced by hopes, everything after hopes is the substance of the indirect statement. Accusative subject, infinitive verb. Caesar widit inimicos adwenise. Caesar saw that the enemy had arrived. Introduced by a verb of perceiving or feeling, and what follows, an accusative subject and an infinitive verb. In a moment, we'll talk a little more about the use of this perfect tense infinitive. Caesar skit Ciceronem epistulas scribere. Caesar knows that Cicero is writing letters. Knows is our verb that introduces the indirect statement. Everything after, we have an accusative subject, an infinitive verb, and now here, another accusative that is, that is functioning as the object of that infinitive. Another example, non credo Marcum in villa esse. I don't think that Marcus is in the house. Credo, to think or to believe, is the verb that introduces the indirect statement. Afterwards, an accusative is our subject, and we have the infinitive of the verb to be functioning as the word is. Now, the tense of the verb introducing the indirect statement affects how you translate the infinitive. Here we have a present tense verb introducing the indirect statement. Caesar sees that the enemy are arriving. Ad venire, a present tense infinitive. When I move to a perfect tense infinitive, Caesar sees that the enemy arrived. But now notice, if I move to a perfect tense verb introducing the indirect statement, Caesar saw that the enemy had arrived. So I'm translating that same perfect tense infinitive as if it were a pluperfect verb. There is also such a thing as a future infinitive. It is formed by the future participle plus the infinitive of the verb to be. Caesar saw that the enemy would arrive. Adventuros esse. Here are the rules for translating the main verbs with the infinitives within an indirect statement. Regardless of the tense of the main verb, present infinitive indicates the same time as the main verb. Present tense main verb, present tense infinitive. Marcus dicit Caesarem advenire. Marcus says that Caesar is arriving. When we use a past tense verb, dixit, with a present tense infinitive, Marcus dixit Caesarem advenire. Marcus said that Caesar was arriving, so we use a past progressive there. Future tense, dicet. Marcus dicet Caesarem advenire. Marcus will say that Caesar is arriving. Perfect tense infinitive indicates a time before the main verb. And so, when you have advenisse, the perfect tense, with a present tense verb introducing, you can translate it as a regular past tense. Marcus dicit Caesarem advenisse. Marcus says that Caesar arrived. 
when we move to a perfect tense verb that introduces Marcus dixit Caesarem advenisse, Marcus said that Caesar had arrived because again we need to have this perfect tense infinitive be past tense relative to this past tense, which means it me needs to be more than perfect, that is, pluperfect. Using a future tense will allow us to use again a simple past. Marcus dicet Caesarem advenisse. Marcus will say that Caesar arrived. The future infinitive indicates a time after the main verb. Marcus dicit Caesarem adventurum esse. Marcus says that Caesar will arrive because we need to express a time after the present tense. Future comes after present tense. With past tense, Marcus dixit Caesarem adventurum esse. Marcus said that Caesar would arrive. And a future with a future, Marcus dicet Caesarem adventurum esse, will be translated both as futures. Marcus will say that Caesar will arrive. Finally, remember that the components of an indirect statement can appear in various word orders. An indirect statement is introduced by a verb of thinking, speaking, perceiving, etc. That does not mean that that verb has to come first in the sentence. Here, Romanos in urbem festina we say putat. He thinks, putat, that the Romans, Romanos, hurried, festina we say, into the city in Urbem.